Good morning, students. Today I am going to start a new chapter, chapter number eight. The title of that chapter is Silk Road, which is written by Nick Middleton. So I hope you like it. This is very interesting story from uh, Handels, and I think this is the last story that I am going to discuss line by line today. So let's start the introduction of the story and uh, the chapter. Now the story, the Silk Road, is written by Nick Middleton, and this chapter is about the narrator's journey, or you can say with the protagonist's journey from slopes of Rau to Mount Kailas to complete the Kora. Now what is Kora? I'll discuss in uh, the uh, line by line explanation. And to bid him farewell, Lampo gave him a long sleeve. Sip skin coat, and he also hired the narrator also hired Tistan's car for his journey, and took Daniel, that is also one another character, along to escort him to Darjan. Darjan, that is the uh, place. So now, how it starts? The protagonist wanted to go to the Mount Kailas to complete the Kora. So that is one uh, uh, yoga type. One, uh, one thing is that in Chinese or we can say that is in Tibetan history. Okay, so he hired Tistan, so that is a driver to drive him up to this Mount Kailas and as a farewell gift, Lambo gave him a long cliff six in cold and he took Daniel, uh, one other uh, for his companion to, uh, to have a company to indulge him. And when they started the journey, Tristan took a short course to the southwest, which was a direct route to the mountain Mount Kailas. And uh, uh, they had to cross high mountain passes to reach their destination. And how they have started and how was their journey to reach their destination. So the, the narrator, or you can say the protagonist, is discussing that in the story. So let's start line by line explanation. The flawless half moon floated in a perfect blue sky on the morning we said our goodbye. Now that was they have started their journey and they have said goodbye in a perfect blue sky on the morning. Extended banks of cloud like long French flows close pink as the sun emerged to splash the distant mountain top with a rose tint blush. Now here the protagonist or narrator is saying that the sky is like a pinkish. It's a, the color, the sun is emerged and it looks like a French loaves. Loaves is one type of bread. It's a piece uh, which is unusually sliced before being eaten. So that is, uh, the scar is looking like a French, French uh, bread or loaves. And it is just like a pinkish color that we found in the sky. And it is a very beautiful atmosphere in the morning. Now that we were leaving Rava. Now they are going to uh, leaving Rava. Rava means they are uh, going to leave the place Rava. Lambo said he wanted to give me a farewell present. And that his friend Lambo gave him one present that is a farewell present because he was leaving Rava. One evening I would told her, I had told her through Daniel that he was heading towards Mount Kailas to complete the Koda and she would say that I ought to get some warmer clothes. Now here I told you that Kora is a meditation performed by Buddhist believer. So now he is going to Mount Kailas to complete his Kora and that is why when he has decided to bid a farewell to Rava, the Daniel and she had her, uh, told her that he will she will give, Lampo will give her, give him one warm cloth, clothes, right? After ducking dark into her tent, she emerged carrying one of the long sleeve sheepskin coats that all the men wore. Now, ducking black means, ducking black means going inside and then coming out. Now, he uh, went inside, his, uh, she went inside her tent and come out. 
and she brought one long sleeve second skin coat that all men were wearing uh, in the uh, in this area distance uh, seized me up as we clambered into his car yeah yes he declared door cup sir now uh, seized me up means to look at someone attentively because he was wearing that long sleeve sheepskin coat and clamber clamber means move or climb in a awkward way and uh, drogba drogba means sapphire sir so now he was looking like a uh, region person like a sapphire that is they are living that here yeah, because of he was wearing a long sleeved uh, coat okay going further we took a shortcut to get off the uh, changchen now this is the driver testan said that we took a shortcut testan knew a route that was take a southwest almost directly toward mount kaila so that they took the uh, shortcut from uh, to the southwest so they can reach directly to the mount kaila it involved crossing several fairly high mountain passes he said but that is a very risky road shortcut and that is a uh, uh, that involved has very high mountains are involved in this route but no problem sir he assured us but uh, tishan said that you don't worry i'll drive it if there is no snow if there is uh, there is no snow so there will be no problem what was the like likelihood of that i asked not knowing sir until we get there so now uh, do you know anything whether there is a snow or not so that the driver says that we will go there and then and then we come to know that is there a snow or not from gently rolling hills of ravu ravu the short cut took us across vast open plains which nothing in them except a few gazelles uh, now gazelles means an african or asian mammal with large eyes that moves quickly and hops now uh, that is that when they took a short cut they uh, saw only the gazelles and uh, here you can see that this is the short cut route now they have to pass catch up mount kailas that would took up for nibbling nibbling means a take take a small bite from arid having little or no rain uh, pastures pastures means land covered with grass and thorn means to disapprove of something because before bounding means jump away into the void so now that the road was like this and the uh, uh, protagonist was bounding away into the void because his face was thrown because of this road further on where the plains became more stony than grassy a great herd of wild ass came into view now the now the, the road becomes no stony now there was a stone and uh, uh, stony when the road becomes stony rather than the grassy they found a herd herd means a large group of animal of wild ass wild ass means an animal who have ears shorter than a horse and smaller in size uh, in gujarati it is called khachar so they found that herd into their uh, road tishan told us we were approaching them long before they appeared kayan kayan he said so that is the native language that he used pointing towards a far off fall of dust when we drew near i could see the herd galloping en masse en masse means that is the uh, in a group so when they are uh, going further they are galloping galloping means progressing in uncontrollable level manner so when they are going further they found a herd of an animal they are progressing uh, and wheeling and turning in tight formation as they were practicing maneuver uh, uh, maneuvers on some predetermined course now they are just looking like maneuvers means military exercise now they are in uncontrollable way and they are uh, uh, it's look like that the soldiers are doing their marching and their course uh, so they are doing like that plums means trails of the dust below into the crisp clean air 
and now uh, below the means filled so now the air was the air was clean which was filled with the dust because of the marching of the animals as he started to push up once more from the rocky wilderness now they started wilderness means westland so because the, the land was westland and it was a rocky we passed a solitary uh, door cup door bus tending tending their flock the solitary means private and flocks means a group of birds another they found one group of birds when they uh, go to the westland sometimes men sometimes women these well wrapped figures would pause and stare at our car so these people are uh, some men and women are staring at our car occasionally waving as we pass now they are also some are waving and some are not waving when the track took us close to their animals when they when uh, they came to that uh, herd of animals the sheep would take in, uh, evasive slippery action veering uh, veering means to change direct suddenly away from the speeding vehicle when they come to this group of animals that in herd the sheep and uh, they uh, took uh, they, they changed their way and they saw the speeding vehicle is coming nearer to them we passed nom uh, nomads dark tents pitched in splendid isolation isolation they also passed this tent usually with a huge black dog so again they found one huge black dog a tibetan mastiff they called it a standard uh, sta uh, standing god uh, guards uh, these beasts were crook that beat big heaves when they become aware of our approach and fix us in their sights now they are also aware about aware when they uh, when we are going nearer to this black dogs and fix us in that type sight and they also fix us in their sight because they are the they are guarding the tibetan mastiff so they are also starting barking at us as we continue to draw closer when they go closer they would explode into action and they started expo ex uh, Uh, ex, uh, taking action, speeding directly toward us because this is the uh, nature of a dog. Then, when the car is coming, they are also uh, speedingly or uh, following them, and like a bullet from a gun, the, that speed is just like a car and nearly as fast. And just like a bullet from the gun, they also started running behind the car. this saggy monster that blacker than the darkest night so this uh, this dogs are darker than the night usually broad uh, or bright red color they have warm one color and that is a red color and bark furiously with massive joys and they are also barking with a massive joys they were completely fearless of our vehicle shooting straight into our path crossing distant to break and swerve swerve means change direction suddenly now they are not afraid of the speed of the vehicle they are continuously barking and following and even distant hard to break uh, to change the direction the dog would make chase for a 100 meter so for 100 meter they were chasing the car so before easing off having seen us off the pro property it wasn't difficult to understand why uh, furious fears fears means means cruel tibetan mastiffs become popular in china's imperial court as hunting dogs rode along the silk road in ancient times as a tribute for tibet mastiff means a dog who has a strong breed with dropping ears saggy ear ear now uh, that was the uh, uh, that is a very popular uh, in china also and that is brought along with the hunting dogs and in ancient times that they brought a tribute tribute from the tibet so it is very popular dogs by now we could see snow capped mountains gathering on the horizon now they have seen the mountain covered with the snow we entered a valley where the river where the river was wide and mostly clothed with ice now again they saw a river and it is a very wide and uh, clothed with ice 
brilliant white and glinted in the sunset glinted means sparkle because the river was uh, icy and uh, because the sunshine is falling on the river on the ice so it is glinting means sparkling the trail hugged its bank twisting with a minder uh, minder minder means to follow a winding course of a river or as we gradually gain height the valley side closed in now they uh, are uh, going on a height right okay the turns become sharper and the ride bumper now when they are uh, crossing the mountains the turns become sharper and the road are bumpier bumps are there Tristan now in third gear. Now he had um, third gear as we continued to climb because they are climbing the uh, the mountain. So he put the uh, gear in a third. The track moved away from the uh, from icy river. Now they have crossed the icy river, laboring through steeper slopes that spotted big rocks dubbed with patches and. Uh, Okay, of bright orange linson. Linson means a slow growing plant which grows on walls and a rock or a trees. Beneath the rocks, hunks of slow clung on the clung means hold tightly onto something on in the near permanent site. Now they are going to cross that uh, that mountain which is so full of lynches that is a small uh, plants and rocks and clumps means uh, that I told you that hold tightly onto something. I felt the pressure building up uh, in my in my ears, held my nose, noted and cleared them. Now, when you go on a height, so that was uh, it is you are unable to take the breath. The oxygen level was down, and so that time the protagonist has having a pressure in the ears and nose also and snorted and he cleared them so some because of the coldness that he had some sneezing or you can say that one cold so he cleared his snore and his nose and we struggled around around tight band and distance stop now we were struggling and then the distance stopped the car i realized sorry he had opened his door and jumped out of his seat before I realized what was going on. So he, when he was uh, the, stopped the car, the piston, the driver came out of the car and uh, the, uh, the protagonist was unable to do uh, understand what he was doing. Snow, said Daniel. As he too excited the vehicle, letting in a breath of cold as he did it. So now Daniel who is the companion and he said that this is the snow. That's why he came out. A sweat. A sweat means uh, a long strip of land of a white stuff lay across the track in front of us, scratching from maybe 15 meters before it petaled out and the, uh, and the dirt trail reappeared. Now the whole uh, road was snowy and it will about 15 meters away then they could find the dirt. The snow continued on either side us soothing the abrupt bank on the upslope side. So that uh, there was the, uh, 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 all side there is a snow and it is really very abrupt the road. The bank was too steep for our vehicle to scale. So there was no way around the snow patch. So now not only on a river, the bank side of the river is also uh, icy and that is on, only one way to go on a snow patch. I joined Daniel as distance stepped on the on the encrust. Encrusted means decorated with the hard surface lever and begin to slither slide forward. Slither to move smoothly over a uh, surface. Now uh, they are going very smoothly on a ice, stamping his foot from time to time to assert how sturdy it was. I looked at my wristwatch. It were at uh, uh, 5,210 5, meters above a sea level. So they are this much above from the sea level. So the snow didn't look too deep to me. But the danger wasn't its depth. 
then you are safe so now the water the snow didn't look too deep it's it's a very thorough so it is very risky to walk on or to ride the car on it because it is danger to daniel said so much at its icy top layer so that the the layer was very icy but it is also very dangerous to walk to drive your car on it if we sleep off the car would turn over and the daniel says that if we sleep uh, that the car would turn over he suggested we saw the uh, disbun grab hand handfuls of dirt fling them across the frozen surface fling means throw so now daniel suggested that you took some uh, handful of dust and uh, dirt and you throw on flung them across the frozen surface we both pitched in and when the snow was spread with soil daniel and i stayed out of the vehicle to tighten piston road so now they have decided to throw some uh, dirt on the surface and daniel and the protagonist will stay and they would uh, the distance uh, uh, spread the uh, dirt on the snow and they will stay out of the vehicle to tighten uh, distance load so that the load will not uh, there on a vehicle he backed up and drove towards the dirty snow so now they are doing the same is the car on its icy surface slowly drove its land without apparent difficulty now so so the slowly slowly they are gradually they are going to have on a dirt or snow and drive slowly 10 minutes later we stopped at another blockage so uh, there was another blockage not good sir and the driver says that not good distant announced that he jumped out again to survey the scene so again he jumped out of the vehicle and he was surveying and noticing that what is exactly the uh, the scene was this time he decided to try and drive down the snow and he decided to drive on the snow the slope was steep and studded with major rocks but somehow piston negotiated them his four wheel drive vehicle lurching from one obstacle to next but uh, the uh, uh, here that the driver has convinced the protagonist and the daniel and they have uh, he is slow uh, he started driving on the slope and there was a major rocks and uh, uh, his car was lurching from one obstacle to another in so doing he cut off one of the hairpin bands regaining the trail further off where the snow had not drilled so now there is one hairpin in the uh, in the tire or you can say that there was a puncture in the tire i checked my watch again as we continued to climb in the bright sunshine we crept past 5400 meters now they have passed 5400 meters and my head began to throw throw pulsate now his pulsate is going to down horribly because it is 4500 up i took gulps from my water bottle which is supposed to help for rapid ascent now he also took some uh, water so that that the pulse rate may go down we finally reached the top of the pass at 5550 meters at least they reached that it was marked by a large canyon of rocks large canyon of rock means the pile of stone on the top of the mountain especially where someone is buried right a uh, festo a uh, festoon means decorated with white silk scar uh, scarves and red prayers flag now ascent means climb on upward slope so now they reached there we all took a turn around the canyon uh, in a clockwise direction as it is a tradition so as a tradition they are doing a clockwise round and uh, driver checked the tires on his wheel because there was a pin in a tire so he was checking the tires he stopped at the petrol tank there was a petrol tank and partially unscrewed the top uh, white emitted a loud hiss now he was uh, saying that a uh, hiss na you when you reach the summit you feel very good that now it's done the lower atmospheric pressure was allowing the fuel to expand and because of the uh, lower pressure the fuel is also expanding 
it sounded dangerous to me and the narrator was saying that it is really very dangerous sound maybe sir just a laugh but no smoking and he said that please don't smoke my head soon cleared as we uh, carried it down carried it down means sinking the slope the other side of the path it was 2 o'clock by the time we stopped for lunch at 2 o'clock we stopped for lunch we had hot noodles inside a log canvas tent uh, they uh, each noodles are uh, part of a work camp erected uh, erected beside the dry salt lake so that is a dry salt lake that was one tent and they had uh, one hot noodles the plateau is uh, Sorry. The plateau is poke mark. Uh, poke mark means disfigured with scar. So uh, with uh, with short flat means thatched roof covered with snow and uh, brackish. Brackish means uh, uh, slightly salty water lakes. So they states that vestiges. Vestiges means a trace of something that is disappearing. of the tethys ocean which border tibet before the great continental collision that lifted it skyward so there was a lake and tethys ocean was bordered uh, border of tibet and uh, it is lifted it skyward this one was a hive of activity man with pickaxes and souls trudging back and forth in their long sitkin coats and salt and crusted books so that some uh, high of activity was going on some man with a pickaxes axes and souls they are uh, trudging with a back and forth of a long six skin coats they, they have weared uh, are wearing the six skin coats and short and rusted boots they have also uh, wearing the boots all wore sunglasses against the glare they have also wearing sunglasses against the glare as a steady stream of blue trucks emerged from the blinglingly white lake laden laden is loaded with piles of salt so in this situation the two men were working and they have wore the coats and the sunglasses okay by late afternoon we had reached the small time town of for now they reached to hor back on the main east west highway that followed the old trend route of lansa to kashmir so that is the route of lansa to kashmir and they reached to the small town of hor daniel who was returning to lansa so he was also going to lansa so his destination is that found a ride in a truck so tistan and i bad uh, him farewell outside a tire repair shop so now he has to go to lansa so he took a ride uh, and uh, you know, from a truck driver and tistan the driver and the narrator with goodbye at the tire repair shop to the daniel we had suffered two punctures in a quick succession on the drive down from the salt lake and tistan was eager to have them fixed the things they left him with no spare now uh, the driver was very very eager to fix this uh, uh, this puncture and that was the uh, from when they were passing from the salt lake so then his tire got punctured okay so uh, hor was grim now what is the village now this village was grim is ugly miserable place there was no vegetation whatever or whatsoever just dust and rocks because it is that much up level so there is no uh, vegetation liberally scattered with years of accumulated accumulated means gathered refuse which was unfortunate given that the town sat on the shore of lake mansarovar so that was the situated near the lake of mansarovar tibes now mansarovar is tibes when venerated venerated means respected sketches of water and now this is the very holy and uh, uh, mansarovar is uh, uh, called in a tibet ancient hindu and buddhist cosmologies cosmology means science about the origin and development of the universal universe pin point mansarovar as the source of four great indian rivers our mansarovar is the source of four indian rivers and which are these indian rivers the hindus 
the gangas the satlej and the brahmaputra actually only the satlej flows from the leg now the satlej came from this leg but the head water of the other now the other head water now if you see things about indus and gangas and brahmaputra that rise nearby the flanks flanks means sides of the mount kailas now they flows from the mount kailas we were within striking distance of a great mountain so we are very nearer to the great mountain and i was eager to forge ahead and i was very eager to go ahead but i had to wait i had to wait as distant told me to go and drink some tea in horse only cafe which we and now he went in a horse cafe where he had some tea like all other building in town was constructed from badly painted concrete and had three broken windows now this horse cafe is badly constructed and his uh, its windows are also broken the good view of the lake through one of them had to compensate for a drought now uh, because of this good view that uh, it is hard to compensate uh, compensate from the drought i was served by a chinese youth in military uniform who spread the grease around on my table with a filthy filthy means dirty rag rag means the cloth before bringing me a glass and a thermos of tea so now there was one chinese youth who was like a, uh, wearing a military uniform he cleaned his table with a dirty flag or cloth and uh, and before and gave him one glass and a thermos of tea half an hour later distant relieved me from my solitary confinement relieved me this uh, captivity now he was right now uh, solitary and we drove past a lot more rocks and rubbish which were out of town towards mount kailas now we, they drove to uh, again on a mount towards the mount kailas my experience in hall that is the uh, village came as a stark plain contrast to account i would read for of our earlier travelers first encounter with lake mansa mansarovar so this is his first experience to stay at a village uh, hall hall ikai kaugauchi a japanese monk who had arrived there in 9, uh, 1900 was so moved by the sensitivity of the lake and he burst into tears now this that is one uh, history that one, there was one ikai or uh, japanese monk who came here in 1900s and uh, so moved to saint city pure that he uh, said about that this is the purest lake that he burst into tears a couple of years later the hallowed water had a similar effect on seven hadi a swedi who uh, who have wasn't prone to sentimental outburst okay the protagonist is is saying about that uh, uh, how the ikai uh, that is the japanese monk who arrived in the town and he was so moved with the purity of the lake that he cried and after few years later similar effect was also seen in a seven hadi uh, who is also a swedish and who didn't have such an emotional outburst but that time that uh, the japanese was crying but he was not crying so uh, when they resumed their journey for her it was dark at that time so uh, this was the thing that he uh, was talking about this two person seven and ikai it was dark by the time we finally left again and after 10:30 pm we drew up outside a guest house in darchen for what turned out to be another troubled night so now they reached and 10:30 pm at darchen guest house kicking around in the open air rubbish dump that passed for the town of hor had set off my cold once more so now again he got a cold uh, at the darchen though if Uh, in truth be told it had never quite disappeared when my herbal tea so now uh, if i have a herbal tea so it may be it will be disappear but it didn't work one of my nostrils was blocked again his nostril was blocked again and i lay down to sleep 
I wasn't wasn't con convinced that the other would provide me with sufficient oxygen. So because of the cold, his one nostril is blocked, and he was trying to sleep, but other uh, it was in uh, it, it was unable for him to take a sufficient oxygen from one nostril. My watch told me I was at four thousand seven hundred sixty meters up. It wasn't much higher than Rahu. Now he was above this meter, and then I had been gasping for oxygen several times every night because of this nostril is blocked. Uh, is blocked, so it, it is difficult for him to take the oxygen. I would grow uh, accustomed to this uh, nocturnal, nocturnal means night time disturbance by now, but they still scared me. So that is also scary for me. Tired and hungry. I started breathing through my mouth now because he was very tired and his nostrils are blocked, so he was taking breathing from mouth. After a while, I switched to single nostril power, which seemed to be admitting in the, uh, enough oxygen. So from a single nostril, he is trying to take the oxygen. As I was drifting off, I walked up, uh, ab abruptly. And sometimes was wrong. My chest felt strangely heavy, and I sat up. A movement that cleared my nasal passages almost instantly and relieved the feeling in my chest. Curious, I thought. So when he woke up, so he was very curious and was somewhat relaxed when he woke up. I lay back down and tried again. Same result. So I was trying to lay down and trying to uh, uh, clean his nostril, but the uh, no result. I was on the point of disappearing into the land of Nord when something told me not to. I it must have been those emergency electrical impulses again, but this was not the same as on previous occasion. This time I wasn't gasping for breath. I was simply not allowed to go to sleep. So now here uh, the righteous no, sorry uh, the narrator is saying that. He tried again and again by laying back on the bed, but uh, the same thing happened and he held himself against the wall, but he wasn't able to relax and he was afraid to sleep now. A voice inside him told him that he might be die and if he would try to sleep. So he stayed awake all night. So this is this type of phobia that he had. So uh, that's why the whole night he was unable to sleep. Sitting up once more uh, immediately made me feel better. So again he was sleep, uh, stand, uh, sitting down and he felt better. I could breathe freely, my chest felt uh, fine. But as soon as I lay down, but whenever he lay down, my sinuses filled and my chest was, chest was all. Odd. So whenever he uh, go to uh, lay uh, sleep and his sinus filled with the uh, this uh, this uh, cold and his chest was odd. I tried propping myself upright against the wall, but now I couldn't manage relax enough to drop off. I was unable to do uh, uh, sleep and I couldn't put my finger on the reason, but I was afraid to go to sleep and uh, sorry. He was afraid to go to sleep. A little voice that I told you that the voice came out from his, uh, from inside, and he was uh, thinking that he maybe, uh, he might be die, and that is why he stayed awake all night. Distant took me to the Darchen, that is the Darchen Medical College, the name of the college. Following morning, that the driver took him to the college. The medical college at Darchen was new and looked like a monastery from the outside with a very solid door that led into a large courtyard. There is also one courtyard and it is just like a monastery or dispensary. We found the consulting room which was dark and cold occupied by a Tibetan doctor who wore none of the uh, paraphernalia, means miscellaneous article that would be expecting. So he took him for a uh, doctor and uh, that was the Tibetan doctor and the room was very dark and cold. No white coat. That doctor was not wearing a coat. He looked like an another Tibetan with a thick pullover 
and a woolly hat and he had one woolly hat on his head when i explained my sleepless symptom my sudden aversion to lying down he sought me a few questions while feeling the veins in my breast now when uh, he said that the narrator and the protagonist was talking about last life experience on uh, that the doctor was feeling the veins in his wrist and he he was asking me some few question it's cold he said now he said that this is because of cold he said finally through his skin a cold and the effects of altitude i will give you something for it now he said that because of cold you have this he gave uh, he, he will give some medicine i asked him if he thought i would recover enough to be able to do the kora oh yes he said you will be fine so he said that because he came here to complete the kora that is the medicine and if you have a nostril problem or a cold you are unable to do the medicine so he said that if i can recover i can do the meditation or a kora I walked out of the medical college, clutching a brown envelope stuffed with the fifteen scraps of paper. I had a five day. There was a fifteen uh, packets of a paper that the doctor had given. I had a five day course, and he had given me the five day course, which I started right now. I opened an after breakfast package. So there was written on every package. So that was the breakfast package. Found it contained a brown powder, and it is containing brown powder. I had to take with hot water, and that that he had to take with the hot water. It tasted like a cinnamon. Uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon is just like uh, uh, herbs in a uh, in our Indian culture. So that is just like a cinnamon, or you can say that is the uh, tuj in Gujarati. the contents of the lunch time and the bed time packages were less obviously identifiable so that they have the same uh, packages of the uh, lunch time and bed time both contain small spherical brown pellets so both have the same order they look suspiciously like sheep dung but of course i took them so uh, it is look like a sheep dung but i took that Uh, that night, after my first full day's course, I slept very soundly. And after that course, he slept well, like a long, not a dead man. And because he was afraid of uh, dead uh, to be died, so uh, it was not like that. Once he saw that I was going to live, he still uh, left me to return to Lamsa. And that time, uh, that driver left him. Uh, and he went to the back lansa as a buddhist buddhist he told me you know that it didn't really matter if i passed away but he thought it would be bad for business so uh, now he was talking about that uh, uh, what he exactly uh, the distance that was talking is that Okay, so now what he is talking about distant left him, and uh, uh, he told him as a Buddhist that if he had passed away, away it would not matter, but it would be bad for a business. And uh, next day, Darshan wasn't looking so bad; it was dusty. And when he was talking about that, how the Darshan looked so horrible after a good night's sleep, but now it is looking good. Uh, was still dusty, partially derelict, and punctuated by the heaps of uh, rubble and refuse. But the sun shone brilliantly in a clear blue sky, and the outlook across the pla plain to south gave me a vision of the Himalaya, commanded by a huge snow-capped mountain. Gurla Mandata was just a wisp of cloud suspended over its summit. so uh, the uh, the right sorry the narrator is talking about that now uh, it would uh, the it was dusty the atmosphere is dusty the bright sun uh, shining sun in the blue sky gave him a vision of himalaya and gurla madata that is the place he was able to see a little bit with the clouds suspended uh, over it right so he was talking about has uh, selling chinese uh, 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 the chinese soap na huh? he was talking about later on 
the town had a couple couple of rudimentary general stores selling that is one uh, soap and that is uh, they are selling chinese cigarette soaps and other basic provisions provisions as well as the usual strings of player flags are also there in front of one man uh, gathered in the afternoon for a game of pool even people are gathered there the backdoor table looking supremely anguished in the open air while nearby women washed their long hair in icy water of narrow brook brook means one type of for zil or you can say the waterfall and babbled down past my guest house and that is where his guest house was that darjean felt relaxed and on her but for me it came with a significant drawback drawback there were no pilgrims but today there was no pilgrims except him i would be called that at the height of the pilgrimage season so he said that i should come here at the season of pilgrimage uh, the town was bursting with visitor and that time the town was full of visitor many brought their own accommodation some some have their own tent they enlarged the settlement round its edges and they set up their tents which spill down on the on to the plain so here they have their set down their tents and they uh, had their support accommodation in the tent and some would stay in a guest house i would time my arrival for the beginning of the season but it seemed i was too early so for him it is too early because no pilgrims are pilgrims are there one afternoon i sat pondering my option over a glass of tea in darjeeling's only cafe after a little consideration i concluded that was severe uh, severely limited clearly i had not made much progress with my self help program on positive thinking on positive thinking now he is seeing that um, uh, it it was really early for him to come here and it was having having difficulty in the sleeping also and the, uh, he had no option other than to wait until the peak season of pilgrimage so the time was much frequently by the travelers he could uh, do kora alone but it was seasonal uh, season because of the road blockage by the snow okay because of this uh, uh, nostril and uh, blockages in the snow season he had no idea if the snow was cleared and he was not feeling good about the dirty ice that still resided on the bank of darjeeling's uh, darkens small stream he had been facing communication problems since the uh, tibetian left uh, sorry tisban left so he was thinking about what to do now in my defense i had not been easy with all my sleeping difficulties i told you that the kora was seasonal and uh, if you come earlier it is difficult for you to do the meditation so uh, he has no idea that what to do and it is really very uh, uh, difficult for him to communicate in english because now the tishan left and nobody is knowing uh, and he also not knowing the uh native native language until that is i met norbu now he met norbu for another man that in the cafe of the uh, uh, darjeeling the cafe was small and dark and uh, cavernous cavernous means vast with a long metal stove that ran down the middle so here he had met one man whose name is norbu the wall ceiling were rented rented means twisted in sheets of multicolored plastic of the stripped varieties broad blue red and white that is made into stout uh, stout means from voluminous shopping bag sold over the china and in many other countries of asia as well as europe now we was talking about another thing that the the how the cafe is was all talking about the plastic that is sold plastic bag shopping bag that is sold all over china and in many other countries uh, of it as well as europe as much plastic much must rate as one of china's more successful exports along the silk road today now we are talking about plastics and this is the most successful business of china uh, along the silk road today 
the cafe had a single window beside which I would take an up position so that I could see the pages of my notebook. I would also brought a novel with me to help pass the time. So now he was sitting near the window and he had also one, uh, one novel so that he can read and have a notebook to write down something to pass the time. Dorbu saw my book when he came in and asked with a gesture if he could sit opposite me at my uh, Ritti uh, table. Now Norbu came uh, to see my book and he uh, 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 asked him to sit in, in front of him, opposite him. And you English? And he said that, are you English? He inquired. Inquired means he uh, uh, asked him after he would order tea. When he ordered tea, he come to know that maybe he is a English. I told him I was. He struck the upper conventions. Now they started the conversation. I didn't think he was from those parts because he was wearing a wind streeter and metal rim spectacles of a western style. So now the narrator is saying that the Norbu is not from uh, those parts but he is uh, uh, because from his uh, uh, spectacles and uh, metal rim spectacles and wind streeter uh, of a western style. But he was a Tibetan. But what he was? He was a Tibetan, he told me. But worked in Beijing at the Chinese. Worked at Beijing at a Chinese. Just a second. Uh, sorry, just a second. Worked in Beijing at a Chinese Academy of Social Science in the Institute of Ethnic Literature. So now he was working in this institute in uh, Beijing, China. I assume he was one of short of field work. And uh, here he was for a field work to know about more about the Quora. Yes, no. Yes, I know, he said. And yes, I have come to do the Quora. And he said that I came here to do uh, Quora. My heart jumped and the, uh, the narrator and the protagonist was filled with joy. Norbu had been writing academic papers about the Kailas Quora and it's important in various work of the Buddhist literature for many years. And as Norbu was searching and writing a paper on Quora, so it is really important to come and to know about Buddhist literature. And he told me, but he had never actually done it himself. But he didn't do that for us any, uh, any time. When the time came for me to tell him what brought me to Dutch and his eyes light up. And when the uh, narrator would like to tell him about his turn, that why he came here to Dutch and he could be a team. And he said that I am also coming here to do Quora, to complete my Quora, and that time they can become a good team, he said uh, excitedly. Two academics, two academics which both are interested in education, who have escaped from the library, and they are escaping from the library to feel the real essence of the literature. Perhaps my positive thinking strategy was working after all. So now the positive thinking that uh, before that, um, the journey was talking about be positive and that strategy really worked. My initial relief at the meeting Norbu, who was also staying in the guest house, was tampered by the realization and he was almost as ill-equipped as I was for the pilgrimage. Now, uh, that is the meeting between the uh, meeting of Norbu is relaxed, uh, really make him relaxed and he come to know that he was more well equipped like a pilgrimage than the Norbu. He kept telling me how fat he was and how hard it was going to be. And Norbu was very fat and it is very difficult for him to climb the mountain very high up. He kept reminding me and he is saying that please keep in mind that it is very difficult for him. So tiresome to walk. Tiresome means very boring to walk. He wasn't really practicing Buddhist and it transferred, uh, transferred but he had enthusiasm and he was of course Tibetan. And as a Tibetan he never practiced in Buddhist but he was enthusiastic about this. Although I would originally investigate making the track in the uh, track in the company of Devolve. Devolve means deep believer. On reflection, I decided that perhaps Norbu would turn out to be the ideal companion. Now, uh, uh, 
the narrator or the protagonist was really very happy to get the nobu as his companion and this is the ideal companion for doing the for, uh, for doing the meditation he suggested we hire some yak and he said that we'll hire some yak that is animal to carry our luggage which i interpreted as a good sign and i said that is a good sign he had no intention of uh, prostrating prostrating lying down himself all around the mountain and not possible and he said really if you go by walk it is impossible and you cannot climb a mountain with your luggage so he would hire a, a yak he cried collapsing across the table in hysterical laughter and uh, it is not possible so this is just one type of joke and they were collapsing on a table by having a laughter it wasn't his style anyway his tummy was too big and uh, the protagonist saying that his tummy was too big and it wasn't his style so uh, here you can see that how the writer or sorry the narrator got a company at the end and uh, norbu finally it is not possible for him uh, to climb the uh, mountain and he, uh, he the why because his tummy was too big and uh, uh, he said that this is the end of the story and they both have a, a finally found a good companion uh, to do the uh, uh, kora okay the meditation so uh, if we talking about the article the, the this chapter about the silk road so uh, why the title is given because the protagonist is exploring the region of old silk road silk road which was one of the historical routes for trade and for uh, this route is connected from afro eurasian trade so that what type of trades are uh, silk road is the, the trade of chinese silk spices teas indian textiles peppers and roman empire's gold so this road is famous for uh, uh, for this uh, uh, exploration and for the uh, connection of uh, trade marks right for connection of thread so i hope you understand the story very well and uh, this is very interesting and i really like it and if you uh, have any questions then you just go through it once again and you will get the idea and uh, it is really uh, very interesting and i i i i know you also like this story very much uh, so have a nice day and uh, thank you so much